This is a video that I wish I had before I started college. I made a lot of studying mistakes throughout my four years of engineering school, so my studying habits and methods have evolved and changed a lot. I've modified my studying methods to save the most amount of time while getting the most amount of benefit from it. Kind of like increasing your studying efficiency, basically. But anyways, in this video, I'm gonna share with you guys some studying tips that I've learned throughout my four years of engineering school. What's up guys, Pat Ben here, back today with another informative video. So I'm going to split this video up into multiple parts because I feel like there's so many tips I could give and I just don't have enough time to cover it at all in this video. So in this first video, we're just going to be focusing on the basics. Pretty much anything I say in this video will be applicable to whether you're in college, high school, grad school, engineering, biology, business, you name it. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into the first tip. Number one is going to be prioritize your classes. So for every semester, there's going to be classes that just seem easy and classes where you don't even understand half of the thing that's taught. For example, in my hardest semester of engineering, I'll probably make a video on that soon. The hardest classes for me were linear algebra, complex analysis, and differential equations. The easiest classes for me were thermodynamics and statics. I made a mistake of spending too much time on classes that were easy for me and the ones that I liked, instead of doing the opposite. This was because I was sugarcoating myself and letting the bad habit of stroking my own ego get the best of me. I felt super frustrated when I couldn't solve a differential equation problem, but got really satisfied when I could solve 10 statics problems in a row. So instead of putting myself outside of my own comfort zone, I did the the opposite. Don't be like me. List out all the classes that you're taking this semester, see which ones you're struggling the most and which ones you're finding easy. Generally, you want to spend the most amount of time studying on classes that you're struggling the most on, but there's a catch. You also want to prioritize classes in terms of their credits or units. For example, if you're taking a general education class on history along with five other engineering classes and one lab, for my university, the labs usually account for only one credit which is kind of ironic because the reports usually take forever to write. But anyway, since it shares a relatively little amount of weight on your total GPA, I would put them last on your priority list. If the labs in your uni has the same credits as your lecture classes, then I would just go back to the previous step and prioritize them just in terms of their difficulty. But we're not done yet. You also want to examine which courses are actually relevant to your major, as in which one will be the most important when trying to land your first job. If you ask me, this history courses, which is worth two credits, will have less impact on my employability rating than this one credit lab, because the lab actually involves, you know, learning practical engineering skills, compared to just this dumb history course that the university makes you learn. Employability rating, I'm not sure if that's even a word, but we'll go with that. For example, if an employer has to decide between two applicants, both with a GPA of 3.8, if they see on average that applicant A has better grades when it came to engineering specific classes compared to applicant B, chances are they're likely going to choose applicant a little disclaimer for the previous example. We're assuming that they have the same interview score, personality, um, same exact resume structure, so literally the same everything except for the grade distribution. I'm not a hiring manager so I don't know this for a fact, but after having talked to a lot of professors and engineers this seems to be the case. Okay, let's move on. Tip number two involves constructing your study timetable in a strategic and effective way. Typically, I spend one and a half weeks preparing for my midterms and two weeks preparing for my finals because the content for the final is usually harder than the content for the midterm. However, if in general you feel that you tend to struggle more than your peers, then feel free to spend more than me. Okay, so first of all, we have to look at what classes we're currently taking for this semester. I'm going to be using the second semester of my second year as an example. So here are all my classes listed in a prioritized order using the techniques that I just mentioned previously. Next, decide how much time you'll be dedicating to studying per day. Typically for my university, we usually have one week of no class before the final exams to let the students prepare for the exams. But you know what? Just to make it harder for us, we're going to assume that we've got no breaks before the exam. I was taking 20 credits for this semester and for lecture-based classes, we have one hour of class per credit. For labs, that number goes up to three hours per credits. So that's a total of 22 hours per week of class. The average person works eight hours per day in a five-day work week. So studying an extra 18 hours per week shouldn't be a problem. 
This translates to around three and a half hours per day, not including Saturday and Sunday. This is because on Sunday and Saturday, I've got no class, which means I can study for eight hours per day. So that totals up to around 33 hours per week of studying, not including classes. Now look, you may think that Saturday and Sunday should be reserved for taking a break from studying or chilling, and that's fine. But just remember that if you had just only sacrificed two weekends to study, the B plus you got in that one class could have turned into an A. So at this point, it's all about your goals and priorities, basically. Ask yourself, how badly do you actually want to improve your GPA? I'm not going to tell you to study 10 hours per day, but the results you get is dependent on how much you put in. Personally, I think that 33 hours is actually on the low side. For me, during exam preparation weeks, I stopped doing everything that isn't related to studying. I stopped going to the gym, I stopped hanging out with my friends. I free up as much time as possible to study around usually 40 hours per week, and on the more difficult semester, is even up to 50 hours per week. Let's just use 50 hours per week as an example. On Saturday and Sunday, I'll study 12 hours per day. Assuming I sleep for eight hours a day, it means that we actually have four hours left to do things like eating, showering, and study breaks. For some people, this is a bit too much. Personally, my stamina is quite high. I only need to take a 15 minute study break for every three hours that I study. Since I'll be taking a break every three hours, it means that I'm taking four breaks in total for this 12 hour day. And four times 15 is 60. So since one hour now is dedicated to study breaks, that four hour free time you used to have is now down to three hours. And you can break that up during the day in whichever way you want. For my 12 hour study days, I like to break that up into four different classes. You see, you have to balance between studying one subject for long enough so that you ingrain the concepts and the problem solving procedures into your brain but at the same time you don't want to burn out on that one subject so you have to rotate it every now and then for me I like to rotate different subjects every two to three hours so you've already studied 24 hours during the weekends so we only have 26 hours left for your weekdays that works out to just a little over five hours per day I split this five hours into two subjects so around two and a half hours for each subject and here is the schedule for my final exams usually the finals are spread it out over two weeks in my university although this is not the kind of schedule you want. Typically, you would want a schedule where all the exams are spread out equally over the two weeks. And you definitely don't want this day where you have two exams. Fortunately, you can't change it. It is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. I didn't take into account the study time during the actual exam week. But of course, I will be studying even during exam weeks. I always like to have at least three hours of review before taking the actual exam. So for example here, the fluid mechanics exams is on Tuesday morning, 9 a.m. to 12 a.m. So I would wake up early at 5 a.m., get myself ready as fast as possible, and start studying at maybe 5.30 until 8.30. The 30 minute break between 8.30 and 9 a.m. is for me to head off to university and sort of calm myself down and uh, focus my mind before taking the exam. Okay, let's fill out the rest of this table just to update our schedule. Okay, cool, so we still have a bit of time to study for other subjects. We're gonna come back to this table a little later on, but now let's head to the exam preparation weeks. You wanna first focus on the harder half of the subjects during the first week of studying. So in the first week, we're only gonna be focused on on studying the top four subjects on the priority list. In my case, that'll be dynamics, solid mechanics, fluid mechanics, and electrical machines. We'll lay this out throughout the week in terms of their priority. So first we'll start with dynamics as the very first subject on Monday and end it with electrical machines on the last subject for Tuesday. We want to repeat this again for Wednesday and Thursday because we really want to focus on the top four subjects. Since we have two extra slots left on Friday, Let's use that to focus on the top two subjects. Okay, so for our first weekend of studying, we wanna actually cover every single subject. So just like we did before, we're first gonna start off with the four most important subjects on Saturday, and then the four least important subjects on Sunday. Okay, now for our second week, we're first gonna be focusing on the six most important subjects. So that covers it for Monday to Wednesday. Now for Thursday and Friday, we're gonna be doing the four most important subjects. And the second weekend is pretty much gonna be identical to the first week. So if my math is correct, we have allocated 18 and a half hours to studying for dynamics and solid mechanics, 16 hours for fluid mechanics and electrical machines, eight and a half hours for CAD and PE lab, and finally six hours for English structure and history. Actually, you know what? I think the gap in terms of study time between the third and fourth most important subject and the third and fourth least important subject is way too large. For me, that just doesn't make sense. So we're gonna modify this table a little bit. 
let's replace fluid mechanics and electrical machines on Friday with CAD and EE lab. Okay, so now for fluid mechanics and electrical machines, we have 13 and a half hours, whereas for CAD and EE lab, we've got 11 hours. Still only six hours for English structure and history though, but don't worry, we're gonna give these subjects a little more love during the exam week. So we're putting them first on Monday morning. Now, here's the thing for me. For example, if I'm taking the fluids exams on Tuesday, I wanna be studying for it on Monday as well. Preferably, I want that to be at the end of the day as much as possible so that when I go to sleep and I wake up, most of the information is still retained in my head. So we'll be studying for fluid mechanics as the last subject on Monday. Now we have one free slot left, and whenever you have any free slot left, you wanna fill it with subjects in the order of the most important to the least important. So in this case, we're gonna go with dynamics. Okay, since we'll be taking the history exam on Wednesday, we're gonna wanna study for it as the last subject on Tuesday, just like we did with fluid mechanics. And now we have one free extra study slot for Tuesday. And you might be thinking, let's go with solid mechanics or electrical machines. Actually, we'll be going with English structure because even though on the lower end of our priority list, we have so much time on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday to study for the more important subjects. So we might as well focus our free time for the English structure exams. Now, same thing for the English structure exams. Since it's on Thursday, it means that we have to study for it as the last subject on Wednesday. Okay, so now we actually have one free slot on Wednesday morning. We're gonna dedicate it to one of our more important subjects. And since we've already taken dynamics, the next option should be solid mechanics. So now for the extra time left on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, we're pretty much gonna be rotating all our eight subjects. And since on this week, we've already done dynamics and solid mechanics, and we don't have fluid mechanics anymore because we've already taken the exam, we're gonna go ahead and study electrical machines at CAD for Thursday afternoon. And finally, EE lab first thing on Friday. So now we've pretty much complete the cycle because we don't have history and English structure to deal with anymore because we've already taken the exam. We can redo the whole cycle again. So here we go, dynamics, solids, and electrical machines. So guess what? I actually hate waking up early and sleeping early. And since we don't have to do that on Saturday and Sunday because we don't have any exams, I'm just gonna sleep from midnight till 8 a.m. because that's actually usually my sleep schedule. Okay, now continuing from Friday, we're gonna study CAD as our first subject on Saturday followed by EE Lab, and then finally the cycle continues once again. Okay, that's it for the weekend, now let's have a look at Monday. So remember when I said that if I'm having an exam on a particular day, I'd want to be studying for it the day before the exam as well, preferably as the last subject for the day. Unfortunately, this isn't possible for us to do for solid mechanics because we already have CAD as the last thing we'll be studying on Monday. So I guess we'll just be studying solid mechanics before we can. Okay, so we left off on Sunday with dynamics as our last class. So you might be tempted to put solid mechanics as the first thing on Monday to, you know, continue the cycle. But, you know, we already have solid mechanics during the afternoon. So instead, we'll be putting electrical machines here and continuing the cycle. Now, CAD comes after electrical machines, but again, we already have that as the last subject of the day. So the only thing left to do here is put EE Lab on the last slot. Now moving on to Tuesday, and we only have one studying slot. And I guess you guys can already guess what I'm going to put in there. Dynamics. Moving on to Wednesday. I mean, there's only two subjects left now, and you know that I'm going to put electrical machines as the last thing we're studying on Wednesday. So obviously, the subject before that is going to be E Lab. Finally, we have Thursday. I mean, there's only one subject left. You could spend six hours studying for EE Lab on Thursday, or you could spend, you know, five, four, three, however many you want. Realistically though, after going through all of that, I'm probably gonna be super lazy, so I'm probably only gonna study three hours for it. And everything else is just free time. You're done. Just kidding, we're not done. If my calculations are correct, it means that we're studying 36.5 hours for dynamics, 33.5 hours for solid mechanics, 19.5 hours for fluid mechanics, 31.5 hours for electrical machines, 23 hours for CAD, 32 hours for EE Lab, 18 hours for English Structure, and 15 hours for History. Wait a sec, why are we spending 32 hours on EE Lab? That's not even an important subject. Okay, to correct this, we're gonna work backwards. So we can't just delete this EE Lab on Thursday. If we delete the EE Lab on Wednesday, it means that we either have to study electrical machines for six hours that day, or we're not gonna study anything at all. So let's just keep that there. Okay, so what we can probably delete as the EE lab on Monday here, and that'll be replaced with electrical machines. So if we delete the electrical machines on the original slot, it means that we're gonna have to fill it 
with the last subject from the last day. So that's gonna be dynamics. Now we're down to 29 hours for EE lab. That's still pretty high, so we're gonna delete it for the session on Sunday as well. So now we're gonna have to backfill those two slots with electrical machines and CAD and just work our way backward. So now we're down to 26 hours and that's still three hours more than CAD. So we're gonna delete one more session on Saturday and we're gonna backfill this just like we did before. So now we've got three extra slots for week one. One on Monday, one on Wednesday, and one on Thursday. I actually wanna spend a little bit more time on CAD, so we're gonna bump that up from 23 hours up to 26 hours, and we're gonna use this session here on Thursday. What I feel is that we actually have another problem. We are only doing 19.5 hours for fluid mechanics and 31.5 hours for electrical machines which shouldn't be the case because his fluid mechanics is higher on the priority list. Since we can't study for fluid mechanics on Wednesday because, you know, the exam is on Tuesday, and we don't want to study it on Monday as well because we already have three hours of fluid mechanics on Monday, you know, we don't want to burn out. What I'm thinking here is that we're going to replace electrical machines with fluid mechanics on the preparation weeks and then move the electrical machine studying sessions over to the first week of the exam. Should be fine because the exam for electrical machines is on our second week of exam. Okay, now we've got our full schedule for the exam weeks. Let's go back to the preparation weeks to see what we can change. So now we're just going to delete them. There we go. Now we're going to push everything up and place fluid mechanics on the last session on Sunday. Oops, sorry. Just had to plug in the battery. Okay, so now we're up to 25.5 hours for fluid mechanics. But we've still got 31.5 hours for electrical machines. So what I'm thinking here is we should completely replace one electrical machine studying session with fluid mechanics. Let's go do that on the first week. All right, there we go. Now we just backfill it with dynamics and solid mechanics and fill the extra slot on Friday with fluid mechanics. Here's the reason why I did it on the first week instead of the second week. The closer you are to the exam weeks, the more you want to utilize techniques called active recall and spaced repetition. Credits to Ali Abdal, be sure to check his channel out. Basically, the closer you are to the exam week, the more frequently you want to be studying the same subject. Because scientific research has shown that, for example, if you want to study for 10 hours for one subject within 10 days, for example, it's much more effective to study one hour per day instead of just cramming all those 10 hours in one day. You know, that's why you shouldn't study for an entire course one night before the exam. See, the closer you are to the exam week, the more careful you have to be when planning out your studying timetable. If I replace electrical machines with fluid mechanics on the second week, it means that the frequency that I study for the electrical machine class will lower. So rather than lowering the frequency for the second week, I'm doing it for the first week. Because like I said, you have to be more careful with the second week than you do with the first week. Okay, and you know what? I think we're really finally done. That brings us to a total of 209 hours of studying. So as you can see, the procedure for prioritizing your classes isn't really all too difficult, but when it comes to when it comes to constructing your studying timetable, it's a whole different story. Just like engineering design, you're not gonna get it right the first try. You're gonna have to play with it a lot. There's gonna be a lot of iteration. You just have to remember two important things. Allocate the time for a particular class according to where they are on the priority list. And don't forget, the closer you are to the exam, the more frequently you want to be studying for it. And that's it. All right, I think this video is getting a little too long already, so I'm going to cut this video here. I will definitely be giving more tips in part two, and maybe I'll even have part three. If you guys found this helpful, please go ahead and smash the like button. Comment down below on whether if this video helped you or not. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, and stay tuned for the next part.